Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Relationship School's Smart Couple Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Gaddis, and uh, I'm grateful to be here. I just can't, I, I just say that every time, but it just feels um, true that I get this opportunity to share what I'm fired up about and how I believe we can change the world, and that's through connection, through relationship. If we learn how to do that part of our lives better, man, uh, life takes on a different meaning and you're able to tackle challenges in a whole new way. So welcome back if you're returning, and thanks for being with us. Welcome if you're new. In the last episode, we talked about the caretaker. Um, for those of you who are tend to be caretakers, right? You look out for other people, maybe at the expense of yourself. A lot of you might be therapists, coaches type people, uh, just natural helpers, right? Uh, that's awesome. We validated that. And we also challenged you to look deeper inside at yourself about how actually helping, overhelping can turn into enabling and rescuing and disempowering people. So today I want to build off that a little more and talk about being in a relationship with someone who has an addiction. And I'm not going to um, go into this too in depth. All right. I will come back to this issue, especially if you want more. So consider this a very light dip into the addiction world. Uh, cause that's not my specialty. I'm not an addiction expert. I don't work with, uh, quote addicts all day. Um, I have done a lot of work with people who have addictions over the years. Um, I've dealt with my own demons and addictions to a degree, and I understand, to me, the nature of addiction and how it works, and uh, pretty well, I think. Uh, and we've interviewed some amazing people on the podcast that have even more experience than I do here. So I want to turn your attention to those episodes, and we'll probably have those people back. One man in particular, Dr. Gabor Mate, um, his book, In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts, if you haven't read it, to me is the best book on addiction out there. And the reason I like Gabor's work on addiction is because it treats addiction as a relationship issue. And that's what I believe um, strongly in my experience is addiction is often a relationship issue. And it's often a response, an intelligent response to a relational deficit, usually occurring in early the early attachment years from birth to you know childhood there's uh, if we grow up in a family where there's uh, like an alcoholic father let's say the child learns pretty quickly that they're not going to get certain emotional needs met and they will get them somewhere else through the other parent or if the other parents too depressed or unavailable they will learn to soothe themselves and take care of themselves over time uh, because that's just what kids do. You know, even when the parents aren't around, kids have an intelligent survival mechanism in their being that orients towards just survival and trying to live. And what ends up happening is when there's deficits relationally is kids reach for things outside themselves to soothe themselves. And that turns into teenagers and then young adults and then adults who are under stress will turn to some substance or another addiction to soothe themselves, to uh, feel okay inside. So that's, you know, the basic frame here of addiction, right? And I'm painting it fairly simply just because I'm not going to go too deep into this. Okay. I'm probably not the person to, to teach that. But I wanted to give you just roughly the context of where I'm coming from, the lens on, with which I see addiction. Okay, now I want to mention if you're in a relationship with someone who has some kind of addiction, porn addiction, gambling addiction, alcohol, drug addiction, uh, internet addiction, those are some of the big ones, right? There certainly can be food addiction. There can be sugar addictions. There's more subtle versions of just my little Facebook addiction, my Instagram addiction, uh, my addiction to my phone, right? A lot of us have that type of addiction these days. And again, what, what gets communicated if you're in a relationship with someone with an addiction like this is 
you feel like you're not a priority, right? I feel second place to the other person's relationship with their substance or that other thing that they're doing. In fact, if we charted our values on a what I call the compass here at the relationship school, we look at your priorities in life and we would, for the quote addict, and I, I hesitate to use that term because I don't like to pathologize a person who has a strong addiction, but that's what mainstream America seems to call someone with an addiction is an addict. So if we look at the addicted person, they have, it's a higher priority them on their priority list to do that thing than to be with you. And so you sometimes feel like second place or third place. And because that's anxiety provoking and upsetting in you, you might reach out and try to get this person to stop or to change their behavior or to pay attention to you. And that's the dance that then gets created in the dynamic that you end up being with, uh, where you're trying to get them to connect with you, to pay attention to you, to reciprocate, or you're trying to help them because you see them suffering, you see them in pain, you see them hurting themselves and other people. And so that's where the episode, last episode comes online is your ta- caretaker comes online for some of you. So if you're in a relationship with someone who has an addiction, chances are you feel like you're not as important as that thing they're addicted to. And you also are scared they're going to continue to hurt themselves. And so you come in trying to help just naturally, genuinely with good intentions, trying to help. And this creates a relationship dynamic that's not mutual, that's not reciprocal. And that over time is very unsatisfying and crazy making. And it can be extremely frustrating and cause a lot of pain for both of you actually to get stuck in this kind of dynamic. And in fact, this is the where the term codependency came up was from the world of alcoholics, uh, from Alcoholics Anonymous and um, the addiction world. So the codependent, if we're going to use that term, is someone who a codependent relationship is a one-way street. I help you, and you're the addicted person, but you're not helping me back. I'm still getting a lot because my little hero is getting a lot of validation. I'm getting dopamine, surges of dopamine, and my own sort of addiction by just trying to help you out. That's where I get my rush, and that's where I get my sense of self and sense of satisfaction from trying to help you. And so in that way, it works. It's like lock and key. But it doesn't work in terms of sustainability and fulfillment long-term because it's not mutual. It's one way, right? I help you. You're struggling over there. You keep, you know, getting sucked into your addiction. I keep trying to help you out. You get out. You say you're never going to do it again. We have a repair. Okay, we're cool. And then you have a relapse. And now we're back in it. And back in and out we go for years. And it's amazing to me that some of you, some folks will stay in this kind of relationship for a very long time. And um, that's mostly because you don't know any better. You don't know that there's another option for you. You don't know that it could be better for you. And perhaps you don't feel like you deserve it, or you don't feel like you value yourself enough, or you're still getting a lot out of that kind of dynamic. Right? So this is me now challenging you. And what my challenge to you is, if you're in a relationship with a person with an addiction, as we said on the last episode, is take a giant step back and allow this person to fall on their face and hurt themselves even more. And uh, they're an adult, okay? We're not talking about a parent-child dynamic. We're talking about a love relationship. Um, They're an adult. Let them fall on their face, okay? They're going to be okay. And if they're not, that's their journey, not yours, You can't save them. As I said on Facebook a while back, you can save people from burning buildings, you can give CPR to someone, but you cannot rescue someone else from their pain and the journey they need to genuinely make on their own. Okay, repeat. You can save someone from a shipwreck, you can save someone from a car accident, try to pull them out uh, before the car blows up, but you cannot, and... Um, I'm saying shouldn't, save someone from their own pain. That's their life. It's their pain. It's in their heart, their mind. That's theirs uh, to deal with. 
and you can suggest help. You can um, encourage them to go to counseling or coaching or get involved in a treatment program. But that's about it. And the thing that I always have challenged people from the years of residential treatment program I've done and working with people with addictions is you got to help yourself. The work is to look in the mirror and look at your enabling ways, your codependent ways, your caretaking ways, and do your best to face your own issues. Because the more you do that, the less that person will be appealing to you. You won't need to rescue. You don't need to rescue someone to get love, for example, right? You don't need to um, be their savior to feel good about yourself. There's another way here, okay? So those are just few a few suggestions uh, because we get emails from time to time, people saying, "Yeah, but what about my relationship with my partner who has an addiction? How do I deal?" And often the questions usually framed in a way is, "How do I deal with my partner who has an addiction?" How do I deal with them? And I'm saying, no, 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 you deal with yourself. As we often say here on the podcast, deal with yourself. Deal with your own pain, your own anxiety, your own fear, your own relationship patterns that got set up a long time ago. Try to change those. Work your own material as we do here at the Relationship School and you will find that you will become a more empowered human being and you will attract a different type of person into your life. And that... um, that dynamic will be less appealing to you over time, All right? Okay, I want to thank everybody for jumping into the relationship school, those that did, that took us up on our amazing offer to get the class you never got in school and to transform your life, honestly, to look deep within and to transform who you are to become the more authentic version of yourself so that you can have empowering relationships and have a super empowered love relationship long-term because that's what we're about here, okay? That's part of our mission. Yeah. Okay, so if you missed out on joining up, signing up for Deeper, um, you can still read about it, you can still learn about it. And in the meantime, I would suggest joining the Smart Couple Facebook group. Um, If you're not in there, that's a great place to meet fellow like-minded, like-hearted warriors, relational warriors who are like you. And and it's free, guys. Okay. You don't pay a cent for that. This is free. You're not paying anything to get some level of relationship support. And of course you can be in that group. And then as you get more interested, you can be like, oh, I think I'm going to invest. Okay. I think I'm ready now. Then great. Come join us. Okay. But for now, um, just type in your search bar in Facebook. Next time you're on your phone or on your desktop, Just type in Smart Couple Group. You can do it right now as you're listening, and boom, you're in, okay? Uh, You answer a couple questions, then we approve you, and you're in. Excellent. Okay, we got more good stuff coming up. Um, Ellen's going to be joining us soon, and we have lots to say. (laughs) We have lots of good episodes coming up. And uh, again, thanks a lot, guys, for listening, and we'll talk soon.